Okay, so welcome everyone to today's Mars guest lecture. Uh, the topic is leveraging your education and certification uh, in the zoological registrar profession. This is not uh, a, an environment in which I think uh, most of our students naturally think about uh, being employed, but it's a fascinating uh, environment to work in, as you'll learn from Ray. Our presenter is Raylan Holiday. Uh, she is the registrar at the St. Louis Zoo. Uh, she began her zoological career at the San Antonio Zoo in 1985, working in different capacities. Uh, she accepted the newly created position of registrar at the St. Louis Zoo in 1991, and will celebrate 30 years working for this amazing zoo in January 2021. You'd never know that uh, from interacting with uh, Ray. She says, enthusiastic, I think, as she uh, was when she started. She has a long history of leadership service in key organizations, including ARMA International, the St. Louis Chapter of ARMA, the Institute of Certified Records Managers, and the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, serving in multiple leadership roles in all of these organizations over the past 30 years. Ray has a bachelor's degree in business management and an MBA and she earned her CRM in 2003. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, it's an absolute, I'm so proud to be able to work with Dr. Franks. I call her Pat, but for you guys, it's Dr. Franks. And um, like she said, we have been working together since 2016, um, initially to do um, this, they were the second academic partnership that the ICRM was able to achieve. Um, and it has been so successful. Um, I don't let me forget to talk about internships. So when I get to, through this PowerPoint, I wanna talk about some potential partnerships and internships uh, specific to the zoological registrar profession. Um, but anyway, so, you know, we do work closely together. We co-present many of the exam prep workshops for all of the various partner events that we're involved with, with the ICRM, with all the REM associations that we all interact with. As, as she said, it is, it is a tight-knit community, and it has become really my life's work over my total career of 37 years, but for the St. Louis Zoo, 30 um, to do a number of things, increase awareness in the zoological profession of the records and information management holistic um, process. So yes, industry specific is important, but you need that framework of global best practices. Um, we have worked really hard at some of the associations that I'll talk to you about today. Um, it's been a a village of the a work, not just me, but work of a lot of different people, a lot of different teams, a lot of different stakeholders to elevate RIM in the zoological profession. We now have some really important key programs in place. We have standards, new standards that came out in January, which I'll talk about. It's going over the next five years, I see some really great changes coming to elevate the zoological registrar position, um, not only in terms of accountability, um, providing those physicians with the resources that they need to develop room programs. Um, and as you know, all of that, you know, as certification starts to be more, you know, prolific, in the profession, uh, we share all the education programs, we share all this information like the MARA program, the various universities that are providing credit for the ICRM exams, all of that stuff is a part of the overall roadmap to elevate a professional position. So that's really what I'm gonna focus on today. Um, I'd like to start with talking about the North American community of zoological institutions. And when I say zoological institutions, not just zoos, but aquariums, and there are some other organizations that might not be a typical zoo or an aquarium, but they, they're in the niche of zoological institution. 
of AZA. AZA is an advisory organization. They accredit zoos and aquariums uh, operating in North America. Over 6,000, sorry, I have to move this so I can see. Over 6,000 zoo and aquarium professionals, organizations, suppliers worldwide. Their mission, their commonality and their mission is wildlife conservation, education, science, and animal care. AZA also welcomes public members who support conservation in the work of zoos and aquariums. So this is a very important organization in our profession. Um, it's not the only regional association, but I wanted to talk about it first um, so that, you know, this is something that if you live and work within the United States, we want you to know how to get to this organization, review potential jobs, and just get a better understanding of, you know, the zoo profession in general. One of the things that I wanted to highlight here today, this is a strategic initiative for AZA, and it's, it's a very important initiative that they, they want their member organizations to embrace, and that is diversity and inclusion. Uh, this link actually goes to their policy on that, but I'll skip to the next slide so we can talk about it a little bit. So they recognize that zoos and aquariums operate as businesses, providing their communities with unique and valuable learning and recreation opportunities while supporting local economies through employment opportunities, money spent in the community on goods and services, and as tourism destinations of significant economic impact. Um, therefore, it's critical that we embrace a strong, um, you know, diversity and, and inclusion programs. Uh, I know I can speak for the St. Louis Zoo. It is a huge part of our community. Uh, the people that we draw to our city, um, the jobs that we provide, all kinds of jobs. The zoo is like a city in itself. We have marketing positions, records management positions, animal care positions, veterinary positions, food service, construction, development. I mean, it just goes on and on. We have at our zoo, we have 87 departments. Um, there are also smaller zoos. You know, there's a big range of the size of zoo and how they're structured politically. But the bottom line is there's a ton of jobs and a lot of opportunity. And I'm happy to say that um, zoological records management is one of those positions. And it's a professional level position. There are other regional zoo associations around the world. So depending on where you, you, you know, where you live, since you're participating in an online program, you could really be from anywhere. So if AZA is not the entry point for you, it might be any one of these other, uh, you know, I wanna talk about the Canadian Zoo Association as well, because, you know, we have a lot of members from Canada, both in AZA and also, even though they're a member of the Canadian Zoo Association, many of them are also a member of AZA because it's North American. Um, but really they're all through Europe, all around the world. So um, these links will take you to their sites and you can explore that information as you wish. There are role specific associations and we're gonna jump in a little deeper to at least one of these, but I wanted to talk about these three because, uh, because of the diversity of the types of organizations that are members of AZA in particular, we have some very small zoos, some smaller aquariums. We have some really large ones and we have medium sized ones. Some of those zoos still have the, the records management, the record keeping duties might be structured in conjunction with other core duties, such as being an animal keeper. So you might have to do, you might have to care for an animal collection manage the records for the zoo or aquarium and uh, any number, you might also manage veterinary records. So there's, there is, a, there are a fair number of situations where 
um, a person is just not doing registrar work, they're also doing animal care and other things, it can be very difficult to understand and grasp the holistic process associated with records under that setup. So, you know, we partner, ZRA in particular, the Zoological Registrar's Association, we partner with these other two associations every year so that we can provide records training to those folks that may not get it otherwise because they're doing all these other things in addition to records management. So let's get into talking about ZRA for a little bit. So ZRA started in 1984. It was 12 people from mostly in the U all in, I think they were all in the US, but they were at the larger zoos where um, their position may have started out as a historian type position. Some of them had degrees in library and information science. Some of them were archivists, um, but they were the people that started the path to professionalizing the Zoological Registrar Association. Then in the mid 1980s, AZA created the standard because the reason why that happened, we'll just back up for a second, is the latter part of the 1970s, the majority of all of the wildlife laws, international and US, uh, that regulated the trade of wildlife because wildlife was being exploited. And so these laws were brought on board to regulate international trade, but also the Endangered Species Act, which is a US specific regulation. Um, there were also laws and regulations with US Department of Agriculture, Centers for Disease Control. Um, and so with the proliferation of that, of those regulations, zoos realized they had to have a position within zoos and aquariums to deal with the legal compliance aspect in addition to the impact to record keeping requirements. So that's how this position came to be. Once they created that standard that they, a zoo or a zoological institution had to have a specific position having oversight for the records process, ZRA's membership doubled over that next decade. So, you know, we needed help. And I'm saying we, because I was, I was in that position at that time. There was no training. Everybody was self-taught. Um, the ICRM resources that we now are aware of and everything that ARMA does and all these different programs that are record-centered, that wasn't on anybody's radar. I virtually discovered the ICRM through the process at my own zoo where I was trying to get a grant to microfilm all the historical animal records that we had. And that's how I discovered ICM certification. I got the grant and then I realized, holy Moses, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I know I need to do something with these records, but I don't have the skills at this time to do that. And that's when my journey began. Um, you know, I was able to get certified and then that led to me finishing my education and so on. So um, that is the mentorship that we do through ZRA now is a result of some of that early work and that early discovery. So ZRA is recognized by AZA. Many of our members participate in the AZA committees and training courses. Um, AZA's first uh, what they call the um, Institutional Record Keeping Course or ERC course that was developed in 1998. And many of the people that developed that course were members of ZRA. Um, ZRA is the recognized, uh, the recognized professional association for advancing the registrar position within the zoological community. So I would say that over the last 20 years, its profile has really expanded. It's a very mature organization. It's well-respected within the zoological community. And, um, you know, the last five years, it's developed its own training program. And I just see uh, this association doing a lot more partnering 
And internships is something that I would like to see ZRA explore to be able to provide a little more of. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about uh, when we get to the end of the slideshow. So um, some of the resources that ZRA provides um, is job descriptions, which we promulgate um, to AZA organizations and any other organization wanting that guidance. So it sort of represents 200 collective years of experience with ZRA members in establishing best practices for the core duties of the registrar uh, role. Um, we worked on this and a lot of the descriptions are now based on uh, the core competencies that you see across the exams with the ICRM exams, um, with the, um, what they call the generally accepted record keeping principles, which is something that ARMA International has copyrighted and distributed. And it's basically the same kind of situation that you would see with a certified public accountant. They have generally accepted uh, principles of accounting. It's the same kind of thing. There is a, a well-published, established set of principles and standards for the core competencies of REM and for managing records. And I know I'm preaching to the choir a little bit here because you guys are in this program and you're learning all of that, but that has been the catalyst for improvements made with this position, um, you know, structuring the position so that it can have the senior management support and understand uh, the core tenets for managing records in the zoological profession, but not just in isolation, not just for industry specific, but more from a holistic standpoint. So that bottom line in green there is the mission of the, of the ZRA. So the Zoological Registrars Association connects, trains, and empowers the community of zoo and aquarium registrars, and that is truly what they do. Scientific-based information is extremely important and valued in zoos, zoological institutions. Uh, some of the core business activities result in the creation of animal husbandry records, which include training, enrichment, and animal welfare, and also veterinary records. Zoological activities with wildlife, as I stated earlier, is highly regulated. So legal compliance for animal transactions and parts thereof, which means biological samples or biofacts, uh, they carry the same requirements. So for instance, if an animal is endangered and those activities are regulated at the international and interstate level, if you had a sample from that endangered species, the same requirements would apply. And so this is a huge core job duty of the zoological registrar in learning how to achieve compliance uh, with all these different regulations. Every time you do an animal transaction, you have to toss your net, your scope, to make sure that you're not violating any local, state, federal, or international um, legislation or regulations. So this is just a couple of, there's a couple of slides here that are basically, I'm not gonna go through every one, but you can see, I wanted you to look at the duties and you can see, you can relate that to what you're learning in the MARA program. If, if you happen to already be working in a REM job, um, you can kind of look in this and see how this relates. So yes, we have, we have retention schedules. Uh, in particular, our position is more focused on the industry specific um, retention schedule. So the zoo specific retention schedule, um, there's a whole lot of records that are created specific to that core business. And that's really what we're in charge of managing. To date, I don't know of a zoo wide records management position. If there were one, I would probably be applying for it because that's ultimately where I wanna end up. I want to be managing records at this point in my career for the entire zoo, not just for the animal records. Um, but that that's an evolution that is, uh, I think it's going to happen. I don't know that it'll happen before I retire, but um, that is going to be an opportunity for people doing this job down the road. Uh, it's, it's that 
development of that career path, you know, where you might start out managing records for an animal division or an animal collection, but with those other positions down the road when they're created, you could eventually elevate uh, to a director level job. Um, this position managers, manages and monitors animal transactions. They, they coordinate with the curatorial staff, again, to ensure legal compliance. Um, they are the primary liaison between the institution and government agencies. So all those ones I kind of mentioned, CDC, USDA, Fish and Wildlife. Um, we also have, um, some of them aren't just vendors, they're more like a member service organization, but a Species 360 being the primary example of that. They develop all our animal record keeping software. It's global, web-based uh, software, and it's there's software in place to manage institutional record keeping. There's software in place to manage medical records. There's software in place to manage some of our captive breeding programs. There's a whole lot of lingo and terminology with that, so we'll get into that, but um, the programs have to be able to manage scientific information, and so they're pretty complex, and training is really important. Um, and we do have training in place through AZA for a lot of these positions. The, the, the vendors, the member service organizations, they provide training as well, but one of the areas that I feel need to be improved, and with the new standards, this is a key area, is all the people in the zoo entering records and doing records need comprehensive training. So this is an area that I think is going to be uh, expanded over the next five or so years. Um, these are a few more duties here. So, you know, zoo registrars are managing the inventory of all the animals that are held. Some of them also have inventories for biofacts. Um, again, that training is really important. It's important for the zoo registrar to have the training, and it's important for them to have oversight for other people that are managing records and have some accountability with that process. So I think we'll see more and more of that happening. The larger zoos have that. It's really the smaller zoos that with the new standards, they're gonna, they're gonna have some work to do. So within ZRA, uh, this is one of the hats that I wear. We started this committee in 2007. At the time I was president of ZRA, we created uh, quite a few committees, but the Professional Development Committee was one that really started this process of being able to um, provide a flow of much needed information like the ICRM certification, uh, different ways to get professional development so that this island that we had for industry specific training, you know, you could get in the boat and go over to shore and, and learn all these things that were relevant, but we were essentially cut off from it because we can only afford to be a member of so many associations. So, for people like me that started this journey early on and all the contacts that I made and all the networking and the people I knew and all these other associations, we basically invited them to speak at the ZRA conferences, um, not just in the exam prep workshops, but also in the general sessions. So providing information about how to do retention schedules, how to do business continuity plans, how to set up an archives, um, and over the last 13 years, many of those presentations have led to increased awareness. It has led to many of our members looking to, to get their certification. It led to module two of the training certificate program that ZRA has in place now, which is records and information management. It's all the whole lost, holistic global be best practices for records management that people can now use in conjunction with, and use it to establish the industry specific uh, part of all this. So ZRA has the ICRM mentorship program. Every year with its annual conference, we have a pre-con where we do these workshops. This year, we're doing our first ones virtually. I think the virtual exam prep workshops are gonna continue both at the ICRM level, but also at its, uh, with its partner associations. Um, 
there's a lot of people that don't get the funding to go to conferences, unfortunately. Hopefully that'll change, but, um, you know, not everybody has the funding to be able to go to a conference. So if we can provide, we've now got this online training program and we've got the virtual workshops. So I think that is going to be just a huge help to many people. So I've talked a little bit about the training certificate program. This is something that um, we actually worked with uh, Dr. Franks and uh, Dr. Dalby. They, they reviewed our content, gave us some really good input on making sure that, uh, at least for module two, that we were covering the right things. Um, and of the six modules, um, these were all, the program itself was released in October of 2018. We've had just under 100 um, members and non-members. So it's open to non-members as well, uh, purchase this program. So it's a great program for people just starting to do this job in zoos and aquariums but it's also helpful to those that have been in the profession for many years. And sometimes you get complacent about keeping your, your skills and competencies up. You know, ICRM certification has a very rigorous, strenuous certification maintenance program associated with it that forces you to maintain your skills. If you don't have a cert certification that does that, and your institution doesn't give you a lot of funding for professional development, you know, you might, you might be lacking in these skills. And so this is very important, you know, especially with the paper-based systems. Our profession is still pretty heavy in paper-based systems. So it's very important that with the new standards in place through AZA, that we, ac we acquire the skills needed to transition to electronic records management paper-based systems are no longer considered best practice. You might have legacy systems and all kinds of different media, but for um, managing the information that we have to manage, we really do need to focus 100% on embracing uh, electronic records management systems, not just for animal records, but for all that supporting all those file systems and all the supporting documentation that goes along with that. So that is what this program, at least module two, is focused on that. The other modules cover all those other core duties. Um, so we're moving away from the self-taught situation to where we have more comprehensive programs for training. So it's an exciting time for anyone entering this profession. They will have more support, more training, more professional development um, to get started and be effective in this role. Um, we, like I said, we started the exam prep workshops in 2008. We've done one with every annual conference since that time, so 13 years. And this year was the first time doing it virtually, which will be next week. So we have three half days that we're doing. Very the same exact process that we do for all the other partner events, whether it's ARMA or NAGARA, the various other uh, associations that we work with. So uh, I think this might be the last slide there. This is just for you to use after the presentation. If you want to check out some of these sites, um, AZA does provide a really comprehensive job board. I mean, there's just hundreds of jobs on there all the time. Um, and the zoological registrar job is one of those. Um, we do have a lot of people that are at retirement age in this job. So I would say in the last couple of years, we have seen a lot of positions open up um, for the job. So I think that's gonna continue for a while. Um, we also have seen the increase of ass uh, assistant registrar jobs. So for those larger and medium-sized zoos where the volume of information is just too much for one person to manage, um, and in conjunction with the change in our technology where these systems require an administrator. Um, it's not just one person entering information in the system anymore. It's someone administering that program, um, someone doing quality control, doing training of other people doing direct entry in the programs. 
Um, and that has resulted in, uh, you know, a lot more of these assistant positions being created. Um, the Zoo Registrars Association, the third link there, you can join. Um, it's not a lot of money at all. I think it's $30 for an associate membership, $30 a year. And what happens is if you join at the associate membership level, you don't have to be um, a full-time registrar. You just have to have an interest in ZRA and in records. But that listserv is really, really helpful. Um, you, get, you can just learn the whole job, basically, by monitoring that listserv. And um, that's where we share and post uh, job opportunities. I think ZRA is looking at incorporating a job board through its website. But until they do that, um, it's a listserv where those jobs are posted. So I want to open it up to questions uh, first, and then we can uh, kind of involve Pat in the discussion about some potential things that we might be able to do to open up more internships, specific to like what Faith was talking about. Exclusively for Mara or applies to MLIS as well? Oh, <laughs> that, that sounds like a private. This is to anyone who's interested in working right. in archives and records and uh, wants to pursue that type of career. Yeah, and let me, let me just touch on the standards that I was referencing with AZA. So in January of 2020, they came out with five additional standards for accreditation for records. Um, one of those requirements is that you have a retention schedule for animal and veterinary records. Another one was that you have a business continuity plan for animal and veterinary records. So... Um, you know, this is going to be a huge area where if zoos are still primarily paper-based. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of evaluation happening on how they can make that transition to electronic because if 99% of your records are born digital and you're still printing stuff out to put in paper systems, you know, you get into the situation where, okay, which one is the official record copy and how do you know that they're always exactly the same and, and the paper has been updated with what's been created electronically? So that is going to be a huge area. Another area is because a lot of our vendors, probably all of them now, Species 360, Tracks, and some of the other ones that provide our animal record keeping software, they are now uh, cloud hosted. So that it's no longer on premise systems for that, uh, it's cloud hosted. And so zoological registrars need to understand those cloud hosting agreements, those service level agreements, so that um, they can speak to the business continuity plans that these vendors have in place for our animal records. Um, and then uh, one of the other ones is, uh, as we do animal transactions, uh, especially with animal dispositions, we're, sh we're shipping animals to other zoos, Having a complete history of that animal's records is really important, especially not only with all that husbandry information I talked about, but for documentation. Like if you imported an animal previously, there's certain paperwork that you need to be able to provide to show that you legally acquired that animal. <clears throat> and once that animal is imported and that paperwork uh, is established, any transfer that that animal might do to another zoo, that's always going to rear its head. That's always going to be important to know. Otherwise, you know, if the zoo importing can't show they legally acquired it, then the next zoo that gets the animal, they're not going to be able to show that either. So the new standard now requires our position to assemble all that animal history information and paperwork and make sure that it goes with the animal to the next uh, institution. Um, and then the other standard was, again, centered with training. Um, so if you are a zoological registrar, you need to be able to demonstrate that you acquired the training. They give the resources. You get to choose where you get your training from, but you need to be trained. And if you are allowing other uh, employees, such as animal keepers, to enter information uh, to create information on the animal collection, they need to be trained as well. So the standards are really 
Great. They're really important because it's kind of it's it's providing senior management support that up until now may not have been provided. Um, it's providing hopefully some budget and some resources and um, the ability for zoo registrars that have not had access to professional development to keep their skills up, they can now be supported to get those skills. So this is huge. And um, I'm really excited about it. And I think that any of you that, you know, primarily zoos and aquariums are not for profit. There are some, some corporate level ones like Disney and SeaWorld. Those are all corporate level. Um, and, you know, the pay is very just like any other job, depending on where the zoo is located, um, the elevation, the promotion of the position itself in that particular institution, all that impacts pay, structure, position, and all of that. So that's no different than anywhere else you would work. It's the same. And, and Pat, you might be able to speak a little bit to that as well. Um, but I agree. I, I agree with that. I was just going to ask while you're answering that question, uh, if you're monitoring the chat, because we have a few other questions coming in. And if you're not, I can read them to you. Yeah, if you don't mind, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, I see one from Sylvia here. And she wanted to know if uh, you need to have a biological science background. Do you have one? So I do. I mean, when I first went to college, I wanted to be, I wanted a, a degree in animal science and I wanted to be a curator. And I went to the school that I went to for two years, came back, got my permit, <laughs> started getting bills, couldn't get on as a full-time keeper at the zoo. And that's when I got the records position. Uh, once I got in that position, I loved it. And I ended up fin finishing my education with a degree in business management and an MBA, which I have found extremely useful in this position. <laughs> I mean, I have used every single aspect of everything I learned in college as well as a certification. So that job description that I referenced, uh, I linked to it. Um, it is available on the public side of the ZRA website. It's sort of like what ZRA uh, promotes as the best job description for this role. Um, I think degrees are listed as preferred, not required. And most people, this is so typical that, yeah, you might have a degree, but <laughs> the likelihood of it being a MARA program degree <laughs> is very rare within our profession. Usually someone's gonna have an animal science degree. They might have an MLIS degree. Um, but, you know, and we've seen that increasing more recent. In the early years, um, there was a handful of people that had those degrees. And, of course, they were charting the way and leading the way for this, for this job. Um, but many of them have psychology degrees or animal science degrees. And that's why we work so hard to share all the information that the ICRM is doing with partnering with uh, Pat's program and the other programs out there so that if members are at a stage where they can get this education, um, they can get access to it. Uh, we also uh, indicate a preference for certification, either ICRM certification or maybe museum studies certification, archivist certification, any of that is going to help you in this job. And for you all who are graduating from what I consider to be the best master's degree program in records management, archives and records management, you would obviously have a pretty good leg up uh, entering this profession. Uh, there's a, a related question about certification process. And so you mentioned several different types of certification. Uh, what maybe would be their best option? I would rec well, I'm going to recommend ICRM just because it covers everything. I mean, you could get a, you could be a certified ar archivist and that would serve you pretty well because most of our records are permanent retention. Mm -hmm. So being able to establish a digital archives and all of that is really, really important, but you need those other skills too. And I just think that the ICRM certification gives you the biggest bang for the buck. Uh, 
a number of our uh, courses for the students that don't know, both 10 in the MARA and five in the MLAS program are pre-approved by the Academy of Certified Archivists as well. So we do have 15 courses that if you took uh, and you wanted to sit for that uh, certified archivist exam, uh, you could say, I have the preparation in order to sit for this uh, certification exam. Yep. Uh, we do have a couple of other questions. So do the duties and responsibilities for your position align with the ones you showed us from ZRA? So you personally, uh, your own duties and responsibilities, do they align with what you were talking about? Yeah, so the Professional Development Committee um, is the one that developed those job descriptions. And I mean, I will say I provided quite a bit of input on uh, being able to describe the duties specific to records management. I provided a lot of that information as a result of my certification, as a result of 30 years working in the profession and understanding the most effective structure for this position. Blue skying it, this is how, this would be the most effective. If a zoological registrar was part of the animal management team, they have oversight for developing policies and procedures specific to records management. Um, they understand how to manage active and inactive records. They understand how to do archives. They understand the life cycle approach to managing records. So uh, absolutely, the job description and my role at the St. Louis Zoo is hardwired in that framework, absolutely. Very good. Uh, so this, uh, going along with what uh, someone would need to know, uh, what sorts of competencies would someone in an entry-level position need to fill? So Erin uh, says she uh, doesn't know if you'd be able to answer this, but are there classes at SJSU that would match these? So from the classes that you know of being taught at SJSU, do they uh, allow students to gain the competencies to be able to uh, uh, work in an entry-level position? Yes. Yes. Okay, Absolutely. Yeah. Far beyond what is needed for the entry-level. And a specific uh, courses, I think, uh, Erin, uh, Ray is very familiar with the MAR courses because she's reviewed them all. So uh, the basic ones that are taught there that are required would fulfill that. But you also, uh, if you're looking at the MLS program, have very similar courses there. I'm thinking of uh, um, Info 249 Electronic Records. Uh, you have a fantastic Info 256 with, with archives and in, in, uh, manuscripts, I believe. Uh, and there are a number of others too. So so uh, I believe we have a number of courses that would prepare you. Uh, there's another question. Uh, is, it, uh, is the profession easy or difficult to find employment in? Well, yes, there was the day where um, the generation of, for, I'm, so I'm 57 years old. I have been working as a zoo registrar since 1985. So I, and before that, I mean, I started at San Antonio Zoo when I was 80 in, in 1982, so I was 17 years old. So literally, I've been in this profession my entire adult life. So even though I've been in the business 37 years, I'm, you know, I've still probably got at least a decade before I retire. Um, I can't retire until I'm eligible for Medicaid or Medicare, whatever it is that, so we have a lot of people that fall in that niche. We also have a lot of people that are ready to retire now. And so ZRA has over 200 members now and the demographics of the membership, uh, we're starting to kind of see the number of people retiring, getting ready to retire. It's getting closer now, it's more balanced with the number of new people entering the profession, either because someone retired and now we have a person that took their place we have someone that was promoted. Uh, we have, you know, a lot of times when people retire, that is when they elevate a position and they add assistant positions. It's, it's a good time. If someone's been in position for a long time, it's good to evaluate the needs to make sure that that position is still aligned with the business needs. So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of that happening right now. 
So um, I think the opportunities are better right now than they've ever been. And I think that's only going to increase. I think the next five to 10 years, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people already in the profession, but also for people like you uh, that are going to be graduating from these programs and looking for job opportunities. Again, you know, if you're interested in working for nonprofit, a lot of people are. A lot of people don't want to work in uh, a corporate situation. Your, your pay is usually better in corporate, especially with records management. If you're talking pharmaceutical, energy, utility, the pay is outstanding, but they own you lock, stock, and barrel. I mean, you know, you're, the hours that you're going to work, or you, you have to be ready for that. Um, what I love about the jobs in the zoo profession is that you do have a pretty good work-life balance. Um, you know, you're expected to be high quality, top-notch, a lot of high standards for the work that you do, but you do have a good work-life balance. That's what I would say. You might like make a little less money, but your work-life balance is typically going to be better than what it would be in a corporate situation. That's also something else that's very important to uh, consider. Uh, there is uh, some, oh, Sarah wants to know if you could repeat the recommended certificate name. <laughs> I think uh, you spoke about the ICRM first, but not the certificate name. Uh, are you talking about the, the training program that ZRA developed, the training certificate program? Sarah, uh, can you clarify uh, what that was in response to? Is it the specific zoo-related certification? You can just hit in the chat area if you'd like. And I don't see that. So I imagine we could say, too, that generally uh, something from ICRM, like the Certified Records Management certification would be good but then uh the zoological certification is which yeah so let me just make a, a little bit of a clarification so the zra training oh. certificate program it's it's not a cert certification it's a certificate program so it's going to give you a snapshot in time view of the core duties of the registrar position um, it's going, it goes beyond what we do as records managers. It covers all the core duties of the zoo registrar role, which is, um, you know, the core tenets of animal record keeping, records management, biofacts, biological samples, animal transport, and permit compliance. So those are all the core duties. So we do many, many things. Records management is a huge part of what we do. But we also ship animals, import animals, export animals. We manage biofact inventories. We import and export biological samples. Um, and we have to know how to use these industry-specific record-keeping programs. I think Sarah um, uh, clarified that, and she said uh, she thinks it started with an I. <laughs> so I think it was the ICRM you mentioned, but you didn't specify the certification title. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, because you're in a program, I'm speaking to an audience that has an opportunity to get credit for the ICRM exams, parts one through five. I mean, you know, I encourage you to do that because you're investing all this time to get the degree program. Why not leverage that same investment in time instead of, you know, getting your degree with the MARA program and then having to start the process all over again with getting the ICRM certification, taking the exams, applying. Um, this is a really great partnership and it's just a wonderful value add for you as a graduate of this program. Okay, I think there's something else. Someone wanted to know, uh, is there, uh, do you see an increase in virtual opportunities? Yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> yeah, um, the training program in particular. So we launched that, the ZR training certificate program, we launched that in 2018, it it's really the first comprehensive online training program for this position. 
in this area. How about for work, Ray? How about for jobs? Do you see any of the registrar's duties being done virtually or partially virtually? Oh, okay, maybe I misunderstood your question. Um, well, I'll say this. Um, being fully converted to uh, digital records management has definitely ensured that I could do my job from home during this pandemic. Um, I would like to think that when the dust settles and we are able to get back in the workplace uh, more fully, that we will be able to demonstrate that we can work from home an acceptable amount of time, maybe not full time like we are right now, but you know, that's going to help work life balance. Cause I mean, we haven't missed a step. I mean, we are fully digital. I can pretty much do my entire job from home. So I do think that um, hopefully the situation that we've come through as hard as it's been for everybody, I think that it has, uh, forced us to make improvements, forced us to be more flexible, forced us to be more accommodating, and we've really discovered that we, we really can do remote work successfully. So, I mean, we've seen it with conferences, we've seen it with a lot of different areas. So, I, I think so. I mean, that's my best, that's my opinion that it, it will increase, and I think it's going to open up some interesting uh, employment situations. I think we see that in a lot of uh, different industries. Uh, people are learning that they can do work from home and they've invested in the technology they need now to do it. So right. uh, some people are saying, gee, I could be more productive if I could even work home three days a week and go in the office. Yes. Two days, you know, yes. so, uh, I think we'll see more move in that direction. Uh, one of our students said the ICRM also has a mentorship program. So you, uh, there is a program to help students who are uh, preparing to take the exam. I think there's one exam everybody has to take. It's case studies. That's probably the most difficult because that right. relies on your practical knowledge. And uh, there are mentors that would be available to help you prepare for that. Yes, they have a comprehensive mentorship program. If you go to icrm.org um, and under the about page, when you scroll down to Board of Regents, uh, the contacts for the mentorship committee are listed there. And they are also working on some mentorship for parts one through five. Historically, we've only done it for part six, the written case study, but they're expanding that now. So, um, the exam prep workshops also are a tremendous help to anybody trying to prepare to prepare for these uh, workshops. Some people are okay studying in isolation, and you can get all the information that you need to study and prepare for the exams off the ICRM website, but not everyone is comfortable doing it that way. They want to be either in a virtual room or an in-person workshop where they can hear other people's interpretations. They can get advice from all different kinds of speakers and things. Um, so we have found that, you know, where people prefer that method, we found it very valuable and, and very successful. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it helps you if you want to prepare in a hurry. I did not take a prep course for the mm -hmm. ICRM exam, uh, so I had to read all of the materials. But right. I, just, I just took a certification exam for a new uh, certificate, um, a certified information governance officer. So I decided mm -hmm. I'll just sign up for the week-long prep. It was just three days, four hours. But boy, did that help focus. Uh, that helped me know what... I should really be spending my time on rather than grabbing all these books that you recommend and reading books, you know, right. wondering which part of the book is going to be the most important for whoever made up the exam. So I think it helps focus you on the right uh, content. Uh, if you're going to spend your time studying, may as well do it on the right, right pieces. Definitely. I don't see any other questions. Uh, so uh, one last call out there. Does anybody have any other questions? Even if you want to open your mic, feel free to do that. We're about at the top of the hour. Okay, so I, I have a question for Faith. Since Faith is, um, Faith, I don't remember when you took the job at Milwaukee County Zoo, but I would love to hear your 
input on some of the stuff that I've presented here today. Um, just another person working within the zoo profession to add some context to some of the stuff that I've said, you know, from someone other than me. Certainly. Um, I'm kind of on the other end of the spectrum. I started as a registrar at the Milwaukee County Zoo in 2018. So I've only been here for a few years. Uh, and essentially that was my entrance into the, the zoo field. Uh, I had had several internships, um, one as an animal keeper and one as with, directly with a registrar at the Dallas Zoo. Um, and it was that internship that really kind of solidified my desire to be a registrar. Um, unlike you, we are not completely digital. And so one of the biggest sort of difficulties in my job right now is bringing our zoo to a digital system. Right. I, I, I hate the paper bailies. I really do. <laughs> um, and, you know, some, some keepers take to it like a duck to water and some are dragging screaming into it. Mm -hmm. COVID has made that additionally hard because I really like to do one-on-one -on -one training. Yeah when it comes to um, into record keeping. Um, it's not the most efficient way, but it's a good balance between the people that get it really quickly and those that don't. Um, I also, I took the institutional record keeping course through AZA and I have taken the ZRA training certificate program and they were both very helpful for me. Right. First, I want to thank everybody for attending. We could remain on, uh, but I, I know that other people have other commitments. So. Uh